In today's episode, we're gonna do some TIG welding on thin stainless steel. Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome to another episode from Pacific Arc TIG Welding. My name's Dusty. To all the arc heads who watch the show, every single week. What's up? Welcome back. Thank you very much for returning. For anybody that may be new to the channel, thanks for checking this out. I'm a welding artist from Vancouver Island, Canada. I do all kinds of crazy welding art on stainless steel and aluminum. I do two-dimensional and three-dimensional art pieces. As well on the channel, I also do episodes like today, a little bit of a different one for me. We're just gonna do a demo on some stainless steel TIG welding. So like I said, if you're new to the channel, make sure you bounce back to the older episodes, check out some of my art videos. Those are my favorite ones to do. But I keep getting a message from this dude who's super nice online. His name's Chad. What's up, Chad? Chad asked for some very basic advice on starting to weld some thin stainless steel. So Chad, I got you, man. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna go over one very basic weld joint where I particularly like to get people started with. It's a little bit more simple, a little bit more easy to kind of get a hang of. Uh, a couple benefits to it, but I'll explain it as we go here. Thanks to Chad, I appreciate it, man. Anybody who has questions, follow me on Instagram. My Instagram handle's right there. Hit me up through direct message. Uh, if you have any uh, requests on little breakdowns or tutorials that you'd like to see on TIG welding, I'll do my best to get to you. That's the place to get a hold of me if you want to. But like I said, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start with a very simple joint, one of my favorite ones. So this joint here is called the lap weld. Basically what it is here is we have two surfaces of metal overlapping one another and creating a joint that is as tall as the thickness of the material. Pretty simple. The reason this one's one of my favorite ones to teach people when we first get it going is simply because you can't burn through. <laughs> I mean, okay, hold on. There is people out there who have definitely burned through on this one. It happens, not a big deal, but it's a lot more difficult uh, as opposed to a butt weld, a fillet weld, corner weld or anything like that. This is a very simple one to start with. Um, I actually usually encourage people to get a hold of this one to start with. Um, and then when you move on to things like a butt weld, fillet, corner weld, and all those ones, you're gonna have a little bit more of a confidence factor built up because you can kind of understand how to keep a puddle under control and go from there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with machine setup, torch setup, and then we'll run the joint. We'll just have some fun today and we'll go from there. So for my machine today, we're gonna to use the Canaweld 201 Pulse D. A lot of people have asked why I don't use my Everlast ever anymore. I actually do. I still use my Everlast. The thing is, is that the fan in this machine is super loud, and as long as the machine's on, the fan is on and totally blowing up my microphone. So as you can see here, the Canaweld is on right now, but the fan's not running. The fan turns off pretty quick. Uh, it's a little system that's built into this thing to keep it nice and quiet. So that's the reason why I use this one. Both machines are awesome. I have a review on the Everlast as well as the Canaweld on my channel. You can go check the description below and it will tell you all about how much I like these machines. So what we're doing for settings here today, pretty simple. Obviously we're on DC, we're in electrode negative. For amperage, we're about 75 amps. That doesn't really matter too much. I'm gonna use the foot pedal. There's the foot pedal right there so I can dictate how much of that amperage I'm gonna use with that foot pedal. Uh, we're running zero downslope, no downslope. About four seconds of post flow, about a half second of pre-flow, no upslope, 75 amps. On electrode negative, pretty simple. Okay, so for torch setup, pretty simple here. Pull it all apart. I'm running a 332 gas lens setup. There's a wedge intercollet sleeve on the inside. Those are my favorite ones to use. Our tungsten is a three, look at the paint on my hands. I've been painting last night. Our tungsten is a 332 laser tungsten from CK Worldwide. These are probably my favorite tungstens I've been using lately. They're very simple. They work so well at low amps. I love how they arc up. They snap up really, really clean on low amps, which is great. And I'm using the adapter system from Edge Welding Cups. This guy just threads over like so to an existing gas lens that you already have. So you don't have to buy any extra hardware. And I'm gonna be using a number eight size cup, nothing too fancy. Shout out to Edge, they make great cups. This is a Pyrex cup. As you can see here, they got lots of options of different types of cup configurations and sizes. They got the long cups, the standard ones, and then they got the short micro cups as well. Those are also, I love these ones. They're super, super nice. They're just small, compact, and super light. But again, like I said, if you're looking for anything from Edge Welding Supply as well as Canna Weld, links in the description below. So these plates have been prepped. I'm gonna wipe them down with uh, lacquer thinner real quick here. Lacquer's all I got in the shop. And then what I'll probably end up doing is putting another tack in the center here, just to make sure that as I start welding from one end, it's not gonna bow up and create a gap on me. So we'll put a little tack in the center there. I'm gonna clean them up real quick and we'll get down to it.
Okay, so now that we have good tack to start with and end at here, made sure that our fit up is pretty tight. There's not much of a gap or anything there. The two plates are laying flat on top of each other. I'm gonna focus on my heat being slightly above the weld joint because if we're aiming too low, obviously gravity is gonna pull our puddle down to the low side. So we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we keep it relatively centered and we're just gonna travel from left to right. Torch angle is gonna be roughly pointed up. Like I said, I'm about a 15 to 20 degree torch angle or so and we'll go from there. Okay, so there you go. You can see it did color up a little bit too much for my liking for what I'm trying to do here. However, this material is super thin, so obviously it's gonna be a little tricky to keep totally cool. The color that we're shooting for is more towards the end there, the gold type color. But I do love the look of that blue and purple. That is really nice to look at. But anyway, what I'm gonna do for the second half is I'm gonna switch to a bigger cup. I'm gonna add a little bit more filler rod and try and keep it from overheating a little bit. I was only using a squeak on the pedal there, so definitely very, very light on the amperage. Overall, the consistency is decent, and we'll see how the second half goes. All right, so overall, I gotta say I'm pretty happy with the second half. Obviously, there is still some color with it, but hey, we're goofing around in the studio today. We're just having fun. So I think I did get onto the right track with a bigger cup. I switched to a 12 there. I could probably have increased the gas CFH. I was running about 16 or so uh, CFH through the regulator. So I could have added a little bit more, but overall, we got ourselves a clean weld. There's no contamination, nothing like that. That's what we want to avoid. So everything's looking pretty clean. Everything's looking shiny. Whether or not you like color or not, you can't argue that that's definitely kind of what you're looking for there. On the second half, I definitely was trying to increase my filler rod a little bit more. You can see it is filled up a little bit more. I think that's probably why it helped out a little bit on the second half. You're gonna to want to see that the consistency of the width is pretty consistent. Overall, it's pretty darn close here. Not too bad at all. We'll flip it over. You can see we have a pretty reasonable heat affected zone. You can see it was a little bit cool here. That's where I stopped. And then as we started to get towards the end, the heat affected zone blows out a little bit. But considering how the heat affected zone blows out towards Towards the end you can see that the consistency of the weld stayed pretty good so that's what we're looking for there we don't want anything to bog out too much so I got another one tacked together here I kind of just feel like welding it just for the sake of it so let's do it
There we go, so there's the second half there. Unfortunately, I got impatient on the second half. It wasn't, uh, I should have let it cool down a little bit. As you can see, the first half was a cool pass. The heat affected zone is much smaller. The color stayed more gold, that's what we're looking for. Second half, I just went for it. It was screaming hot. <laughs> If I had to let it cool, it probably would have turned out better colors, but regardless, everything stayed relatively clean, everything in control for the most part. Consistency was all right. First half was not that great as far as consistency. Second half, much better. Backside, again, you can see the tie-in was there in the middle. Uh, heat affected zone was pretty consistent on this one. Uh, probably because I did not let it cool down on this one. I just went for it one pass and then the other without uh, waiting at all. <laughs> I definitely recommend Letting your pieces cool down. But there you go, so this guy was decent, relatively happy with some of it. Compared to the first pass there, a couple things I would have done differently to get it a little bit cleaner, but there we go, it was all good, we had some fun. So there we are, overall those were fun. We just had some fun today, goofed around with some super thin material. Again, because the material was so thin, I probably would have set up a few things a little bit differently, but for doing just two passes, just totally sent it, didn't do any warm ups or anything today, they turned out okay. So I would probably increase my gas flow for sure. I would turn that up maybe to about maybe 20 to 25 CFH on the regulator. I switched to a 15 cup for that last one. That was a little bit more in the ballpark of what I would end up probably doing. So I'd have a bigger cup orifice, more gas coming through it. And what I would probably do is increase my travel speed quite a bit too. So I'd probably keep the same same consistency, uh, probably keep the same amount of fill, but I would just try and travel a little bit quicker. That would help a lot of heat to uh, not build up in the material as much, because like I said, we're working with material that's about one, it's about a 16th of an inch thick, so pretty thin stuff. Chad, I appreciate you for suggesting this episode. Thank you. Uh, we'll have more coming. Uh, we'll do a butt weld, we'll do corners, we'll do fillets and stuff like that. But as I said, I've got lots going on with uh, art commissions. <laughs> so you'll see more art stuff coming out on the channel pretty soon. I got uh, students in my online training program. So again, if you're interested in my online training program, it's pacificarctigwelding.com. It's right there on screen. Check it out. I help people online uh, at their own pace. We go through a program that's about eight weeks long. Uh, I help them out with aluminum TIG welding. That's kind of what I'm specializing in right now. I got people who are doing really well in it. It's a lot of fun. I'm getting better as a teacher online. I've been teaching in person for a pretty long time, but to do it online has been a lot of fun. So if you're interested, hit me up with an email. We'll get a conversation, go and see if you're a good fit, and we'll go from there. But to anybody that watched this episode today, I issue one challenge. If you got any value from the demonstration or anything you've seen on this channel today, in return, I encourage you to do a random act of kindness for a stranger. So like I say, uh, helping an old lady to her car with groceries, uh, helping some guy who fell down the stairs, uh, whatever, <laughs> it's just anything. Write something nice on a stranger's Instagram, just anything to put any kind of spark of positivity out into the world today. We need more positivity in the world. It's too stressful right now. So anything you can do, uh, that's an issue I challenge from every episode from me to you. I appreciate that very much, but I hope everyone's doing well. Again, my name's Dusty. Thank you a lot for watching today. I hope you're having a good one. Stay safe. Peace out.